is that you can reduce my access to good ways to quit because I, you know, I, one, might not be able to avail myself of these quitting alternatives without exposing myself to some risk of prosecution, for example. Uh, another example is in order to avoid prosecution and other things, I might have to distance myself from family and other people who might be able to help me quit in general. Uh, none of those things, those things I don't think of as good because they, they raise the cost of quitting. Um, so I, I think you might, you might really want to think about those kinds of things before you make an addictive sub subject, substance illegal because it actually could reduce people's ability to quit. Now, having the ability to quit is a double-edged sword, right? Because we talked about this the other day. The easier I make it to quit, the more people will start. There's, I think that's an, almost an unambiguous in, implication of economics, right? And that as soon as I tell you I'm going to make it easier for you to quit, you're less worried about getting addicted. And that could ultimately be so strong that more people end up addicted when you make it easier to quit, right? It's an elasticity question. Is the elasticity of starting greater than, than sort of the elasticity of quitting? So you get even more of a response on the starting side. It's like if I make an activity safer, will more people die or fewer people die with the activity? Well, it depends on how elastic demand is. If demand is sufficiently elastic and I make it safer, and then more people will do it and I could get so many more people doing it that the total number of deaths would go up rather than down. Right? You just, if you wanted to think about it in terms of a price, you would just need the demand to be sufficiently elastic. So if the risk of death is half the price, you'd basically need the elasticity to be bigger than two. Yeah? Uh, 